hi friends hope you are all doing well so today i'm going to discuss about phd versus postdoc and if you have embarked on a research career you probably need to do a phd and you may also end up doing a postdoc so let's look at some of the key differences between these two periods of training as far as research is concerned so i'm going to give you five points and i'm then going to give you one bonus point so the first issue is coursework and essentially if you are a phd student you may be required to do a number of courses and this varies depending on countries in the commonwealth countries typically the course requirement may be very less sometime it may not be there if you have a master's degree and in the us typically there is a quite substantial course requirement in most cases now there has been a lot of discussion among the professoriate as to whether course requirements are good or bad but my personal feeling is that it's always good to take courses in the broad research field where you are going to do your research as well as some courses in the secondary areas which are close to your research problem so this always helps you not only in terms of doing your phd because you are going to encounter encounter less difficulties in reading papers in going through books and so on but it's also going to broaden your depth of knowledge as far as job search is concerned so in most of these cases there is a requirement for grade so you will be required to get some kind of grade such as 3.5 out of 4 or 8 out of 10 in terms of cgpa so you need to make sure that your grades are good and very often i have seen that this requirement adds a lot of pressure to the phd students so essentially the phd students they often spend their first year or the first two years of their plan in studying very hard to get good grades now the next or number 2 point in the phd versus postdoc debate is the comprehensive examination and essentially in any phd program there is some sort of comprehensive examination which tests your competence in the so called research training program so you need to select 3 to 4 courses or you may need to draft a syllabus for your comprehensive exam and then this exam may be a written test or you may have to come in front of a committee and defend your thesis and so on so in most cases the comprehensive exam is quite difficult and uh, i remember in written comprehensive exams you essentially have to take exams set by different professors so these are not the professors whose classes you took so very frequently these examinations are quite difficult and students get a lot of stress regarding the comprehensive exam now one extension of the comprehensive exam is a defense of a phd proposal so in many departments you essentially have to propose a certain title of a thesis you have to propose the problem do a literature survey and essentially outline this problem to a committee so sometimes this is known as a proposal defense sometimes it's known as a presentation of the thesis proposal and so on but whatever may be the case this is another hurdle which you need to cross and here you may be asked questions not only on the syllabus not only on your phd problem but you may be asked generic and tangential questions because the professors can go in any direction they want to go now these two bodies of tests comprehensive and phd thesis proposal is like visit to a dentist so it's a difficult part of the phd process now the number 3 issue in phd is that there is a skewed power difference between the student and the supervisor and essentially the supervisor does have a lot of power and depending on their personality you have to follow their style in terms of research in terms of writing selection of the journals and so on now sometime you may have very little say in your research direction and this is typical of a corporate type of supervisor who may already have written out a proposal as to what you are going to do and in that case you are just going to implement this task and uh, this can be difficult for some people who want a more broad minded view of things but given the power differential between the advisor and the student the student essentially has to do whatever the phd supervisor says or there are deleterious consequences and that thing may not go very well so there is very less say as far as your 
research problem is concerned so sometimes there is more say but if your supervisor wants you to do experiments you have to do experiments if he if you think that computational work is enough that may not be sufficient so this is again the third issue the skewed power differential now the fourth issue is that of salary typically phd students are paid very less salary almost like a stipend just to get by just to manage their food and some of their basic necessities so one of the things which you get as a postdoc is you may get a three to five percent increase in your salary rather three to five times an increase in your salary so uh, three times increase in your salary is generally to be expected in a postdoc and uh, you should negotiate for that and you should at least get more than that you can probably aim for four to five times your phd salary now one advantage of postdoc is you may be able to have enough pay so that you can rent an apartment or live somewhere else you no longer may have to live in a hostel or a dorm as a phd student you may get some additional money for contingencies travel grants and so on and uh, some of these salary increments may actually help you to improve your quality of life so that was number four issue the issue of salary now the number five issue is that now once you have finished your PhD and you are a postdoc you can also review papers and so on. So when you are a PhD student you are only the subject of reviews so essentially you send out your paper you send out your thesis and people are reviewing your work you are like a trainee and uh, once you have finished your PhD you have the doctor in front of your name then your possibility of um, reviewing papers becomes much higher so you do now have some degree of power as far as the research system is concerned now let me tell you the sixth point and that's quite interesting is the issue of respect as far as academic research is concerned now one of the interesting things i came to know from a department chair some time ago or a long time ago is that typically in the department or the universities they have a certain view of UG students the UG students are like customers they often pay tuition which runs a large part of the university and so on and the UG student has a potential of you know becoming a CEO one day vice president of a company joining the military becoming a general even becoming the prime minister or president or governor of the country so most of these people if you see their degrees they will essentially have a bachelor's degree from a given institution and so this degree is often sufficient to do quite well in normal life now when you go from a BS student to a PhD student you find that sometimes the professors have become harsher with you and they are actually less nice to you and the reason for this is because now that particular path of doing all these different disciplines like becoming a general or becoming a CEO or uh, uh, working as a police chief all have been diminished substantially and now you are likely to be a professor or a researcher so you are now part of this research community and effectively you are at a beginning stage of this research community you are almost like a trainee so essentially sometime BS students when they enter the masters or PhD program they may feel this kind of lack of respect coming in on the part of the professors and so on it's not a lack of respects it's just that your position has changed now one of the things which happens is that when you do the PhD and you finish the PhD and you get the doctor title in front of your name your position against changes because now you are a player in the game of research and who knows down the road you may become a professor you may become a national lab head you may become a CTO in some firm you may become a department chairman and you will certainly be a reviewer in one of the journals where all the professors publish in so suddenly you will find that people will start treating you with some degree of respect they know that who knows maybe their proposal is going to land up on your desk maybe their paper is going to come to you so suddenly you are a part of a collegium you are a part of a cult as the case may be and so your respect as goes up when you become a postdoc now in the case of postdoc all these issues which i mentioned before will go away or at least some of these will go away you no longer have coursework you no longer have comprehensive exam the power 
differential between you and your supervisor is much less. The most important part is now you can escape at any given point. So in case you have finished your postdoc or you have completed your postdoc for some time, you are free to go anywhere else. You no longer have to stay in to get your PhD degree. There's nothing like a postdoc degree. It's just a job. So if you finish a period of one year postdoc, six month postdoc, three year postdoc, you can simply leave and get a new job. As I mentioned before, your salary is more. You can now review papers and so on. And generally, you will be more respected as far as the professoriate is concerned. So this was my take on the postdoc position versus the PhD. Remember, as far as academia is concerned, it is somewhat like a cult, or if you want to think about it as a clergy or a monastery. So getting into it is difficult, but once you are into it, generally you are treated with respect because you are one of the member of this collegium. So I will see you soon in a new video. See you then.